Hey everybody, welcome back to our Tutorials for Music Teachers, brought to you by ambanddirector.com. We're at the beginning of a series where we're going to be leveling up our student list with the power of spreadsheet magic and using the tools that are contained in Google Sheets. In today's video, we're actually going to focus on the first step. We're going to build our student list, and we're going to build that list from scratch and make sure we really get comfortable with the tools contained in Google Sheets. If you use Microsoft Excel, much of this should work in the same way with a little adjustment. So let's dive right in. First, what we want to do is we actually want to enter our basic student data into a fresh new spreadsheet. Now, if you already have things in an existing sheet, that's fine. If you don't have your data, I actually created a random band class generator that you can download if you want. Um, it's on Teachers Pay Teachers. So if you click on the link in the description, It'll take you to uh, this website, and here's the file that you can download. You can add it to your Google Drive. Okay, so we've got our list here. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna get this into a new sheet. And I wanna get this entire thing highlighted all the way down. Go to Edit, and I'm going to copy this. Okay, and then I'm just gonna to go to File and New, create a whole new spreadsheet. Okay, I'm gonna title my spreadsheet. Let's go Student List. Title this 01 because it's the first in our video series. In this top cell, we're going to go to Edit, Paste. Now, I don't want to paste everything because there's formulas in there that will mess things up. So let's just paste the values. And there we are. Let's, let's go ahead and delete this top row. I don't need that. So whatever you have in your list, definitely need a student ID of some kind, some number that is unique to that kid, to that row in their last name and first name in separate cells. Okay, stop real quick. Before you take the time to retype all your student names into separate cells, Google Sheets has tools that will actually do it for you. If you need help with this, check out the video I made up here on the top right. Otherwise, let's get back to the show. In their last name and first name in separate cells, you also want their gender, their date of birth, their age, their grade, all kind of the identifying information, and then a band class and their instrument or part. But those are what you want to have set up. Now, once your columns are listed up here, okay, the way that you need it, then you're set to go. You can leave some of these cells blank if you don't have some of this. If you're importing from your your district gradebook, or maybe you got a list from your your counselor, your secretary, and it doesn't have some of this, that's okay. We we, we can add that in later. I'll show you some ways that we can import this. Um, but let's, let's check our steps here. We've entered our information into a fresh new spreadsheet. And again, all the different ways you can copy and paste that. We have made sure we have our school ID, name, all of our student identification information. We have our band class and our part. So what we're going to do is actually add our first formulas. Okay, this is where it really kind of gets exciting. So first thing we're going to do is combine our first and last names into one cell with concatenate. We're going to combine these two into one cell. So what I need to do is I need to add a column. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that. I can go up here on C and I can click this little drop down arrow and it pulls up all these extra things I can do. I can also right click right there or if you don't have a mouse, you can do a control click, control, click and that pulls up a right click menu. You can also go up here and go to insert columns. There's always lots of ways to access the tools you need. So for now I'm going to right click. I want to insert a column to the right. I'm actually going to do two of these because I wanted to get two lists. I'm going to make a last name, comma, space, first name. And then I'm also going to do a first name, space, last name. So what we want to do is create our first formula. The way you do all formulas is the same. You start with an equal sign, and then you start typing the formula. So this is concatenate, C-O-N-C-A-T, and this pulls up two options. What we want is this longer one here, and what it does, it pulls up this little helper menu. You can expand the details and read a little bit more about it and how it works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna combine strings of text together. So this is a string of text, inside quotations, comma, and the next string of text. And you could actually do that multiple times. So those little three dots are. 
We don't want to actually type this in though, we want to reference this cell. So all I need to do is I'm going to click with my cursor right there, flashing cursor. I'm going to click right here on cell B2 and it actually puts it cell B2. Then I'm going to do a comma and I'm going to click the next one. Now the problem is it doesn't put a comma in here, does it? It puts it right together. So what we're going to do is something special. We're actually going to put a quote, open quotations, a comma, a space, and a close quotations, and another comma. And what that does is it combines this cell B2 with comma and space with cell C2. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to close parentheses, hit enter. And part of the magic of spreadsheets and why they're so smart is they actually can predict what I want to do next. So they're going to suggest this autofill. I'm going to say, well, yes, I'd love to take that formula I just typed and copy it all the way down the page. Fantastic. Okay, so let's increase this so I can read it. All right, wonderful. So let's do the same thing right here. But we're going to do a different order. Equal sign. Now it already tells, thinks it knows what I want, and it's close. It's close. I'll give it that. So concatenate. I want C2 to be first, yes, but I don't want that comma there. I actually just want a space to space, close quotations. So that'll put a space in between C2 and whatever I choose next. So let's choose B2. Instead of clicking, let's just type it in, B2. And there we go. Close parentheses, enter, and looky there. Suggested autofill, yes. All right. Fantastic. So right now we've got our last name and our first name in two different combinations and which will become helpful later. So step two, we want to turn the date of birth value into their age. So what we'll notice here right now, I've already got the age listed. If you don't have that, there's a, this is an easy way to create that. You don't have to do the math yourself. Spreadsheets will do the math for you. So I have date of births here. If I don't have an updated age, this is not going to stay constant. So we need it to be dynamic, meaning it'll change as time goes on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of these. Now, instead of hitting shift and just going down all the way down the page, you can actually do shift, command, arrow down, and it will highlight everything all the way down the page until it gets to a stopping point. And then I'm going to delete. Instead of scrolling back up, I'm going to arrow up, and it takes me right back to the top where I was. So we're going to put a formula right here. That formula is date difference. So equal sign, date difference. There it is right there, date diff. So our starting date is going to be their birthday. So I'm going to click right in that cell, G2. Do a comma. And I need an end date. Now I could type in today's date, but that's just ridiculous. That defeats the whole purpose of this. So instead, we can actually type in the word today. And that is a formula in itself. And it has that quotation, so I'm gonna actually close the quotation. I don't need to put anything inside of it. I'll do another comma. And now it's asking for a unit. What I want is the year. I wanna know how many years between this date and today. I don't need months and days, although you could do that if you want. So I'm just gonna do a open quotations, year, close quotations. If I just type a Y, that's not actually gonna give me anything. Okay, so that's not what I want. I want the open quotations, year, close quotations. So all these details and formulas is important, and as you get practice with this, you're going to learn this, and you're going to start picking up on why it worked or why it didn't. If an error happens as you type in a formula, it's usually related to a misplaced comma open, or, or a quotation mark. Okay, here we go. Hit enter, and there's our suggested autofill. Now, sometimes this doesn't happen. Sometimes you just did a formula... And here's my formula right here. And this doesn't pop up for one reason or another. So there's other ways to copy it. What I can do is just highlight that cell, Command C, I'm gonna copy it. And I can just go down the page, Command V, Command V, Command V, and it will constantly update the formula to reflect the cell it needs. There's also this little drop down, little, little box. So if I click on that and drag it down, it will pull it all the way down. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I can also do what we did earlier. I've copied it. I'm going to hit Shift, Command, Down Arrow. And it's going to pull all the way down the page. All these other cells that aren't needed. And I'm going to do 
Command V. Looky there. All right, it copied. Now, one of the things it does do is it actually copies into these blank cells for now. I'm just going to highlight all those and delete it. I'll show you a way to fix that later on. Okay, but we don't need to cover that today. All right, so we've got our age. We have our names. What else do we need to do today? We want to turn our instrument code into a name with replace. All right, so let me show you how that works. So I want to get over here to the part code. Now, there's a lot of cells here. It's kind of hard to move. I'm going to scroll sideways here. And so part code, the reason I use 01, 02, 03 in here is because I like to have my student list sorted in score order. Now, if you don't care about it being in score order, you can just type in the instruments as is, and that's fine. Okay, but the problem is if you did want to sort this and your instruments are listed like this, well, guess what? Alto saxophone is going to be at the top, and who really wants, to be honest, who wants saxophones to be at the top of their list? Come on. And this is coming from a saxophone player, by the way. So I use codes, 01, 02, 03. So there's, that's a great way to keep things in order. But we don't really want to put that on a program, right? We don't want to have that be listed, you know, congratulations, your child plays 01 flute. That's not, that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. So let's make this easier. We're going to turn this into a part name. And the way to do that is with the replace function. So equals place. Click on this one right here. All right, so the text we want to replace is this one in this cell. So I'll reference K2, hit comma. So the position, the position where the replacement will begin. Okay, but the position I'm starting at is position one. I want to start at the beginning of this cell. Everything in here from the beginning. Now, luckily, since I'm using two digits for my numbers, all these are the same. Okay, tuba is 13. So I want to get rid of those first three things, the two numbers and the space. So I'm going to start at position one. The length is going to be three. That's three units, three digits. And then new text. What do I want to put in that place? So in some cases, you could actually replace that with something. Like I could put in quotations. I could put, you know, a dollar sign. I could put some stars carrots, whatever. For now, I just want to put nothing. So open and close quotations will do that. Close quote, close parentheses, enter. There we go. Suggested autofill will take us all the way down. All right. So if you made it this far, congratulations. You have created your first smart student list with formulas. We've got our concatenate here. We have our date difference, and we have replace. There's going to be a lot more formulas we're going to go over in the series, but I think this is kind of a good place to stop. The last thing I want to do is get some formatted in here to make this much easier to read and organize. First thing I always like to do is make sure my columns are a width that I can handle, because some of these don't need to be this wide. And there's several ways to do that. If you click and drag on the little line here, you can do that. If you double tap on that spot, it will actually automatically open or close to the needed space to see it. Because there are some people, of course, that have longer last names. Sir Nick. You can also highlight this little box that highlights everything. And just, it'll do that for the entire set. Okay, pretty cool. Um, I also want to make sure that my headings are something I can easily read. So I'm going to increase the size of that. Going to bold these, turn them into 12, and let's center. Okay, and some of these don't need to be that wide. What I can do is actually turn the direction of the text up, and I'll do that for some of these. So again, I'll highlight, automatically adjust. Also, for our district, a lot of the student IDs are six digit, so I want to make this automatically six digit. One of the neat things you can do here with formatting is you can actually do some custom number formats. So if I type in six zeros, what it'll do is it'll automatically add the right number down the page. All right, so your tens are still there. Okay, so I'll increase that a little bit. So we've adjusted column widths. Let's also free, freeze some rows. 
So freezing rows is basically how you create header rows in Google Sheets. So I want to freeze this first row here. So if I sort or scroll, I can still see that at the top. So you're gonna do that by going to view, freeze, and I wanna do up to row one. There we go. I might also wanna do the same thing because eventually you're gonna have lots of data off to the right hand side here. Okay, so I also wanna freeze some columns. Um, so let's go ahead and freeze at the name point. And for me, I like to have this be the main thing I see. So we're going to go view, freeze. Now I don't want one or two columns, I'm gonna do up to column E. And there we are. So if I scroll, it's all gonna be on that side. One of the little tricks also, if you have a mouse with a mouse wheel, if you hit the shift button while scrolling, it'll scroll left and right. Yeah, kind of cool. Up and down, left and right. So but the problem is the with the way this is set up, right, is that it's too much information on the left side of the screen. I don't need all this. So what I like to do is actually hide some of this information. So you could just simply go and hide it, and that cleans it up nicely. But what I like to do instead, actually, of hiding is grouping. Because if I hide this and I want to unhide it, I would have to go back to the menu and hit hide to do it again. But if I wanna constantly open and close these, grouping is a better way to do it. So with these highlighted, we're gonna go up to view, group, and I'm gonna group columns B through D. And one of the also neat things about spreadsheets is it gives you the keyboard shortcuts right here. So option, shift, and the arrow key sideways. So let's try that. Option, shift, holding them all down, arrow key to the right, and it creates this beautiful little line right here. Check it out. I click on the minus, and it shrinks all of that down. If I want to see it again, plus. Fantastic. Well, let's do that also with this information. I don't usually need to see this on a daily basis. So you can do the option, shift, arrow key. And if I want to undo it, I can just do the arrow key to the left. Okay, kind of neat. There we go. I also don't really need the part code, the part name very often. I'm gonna usually use this for sorting, so I'm gonna hide this one as well. And again, you can also just do it from this menu down here. Group and ungroup, freeze and unfreeze. There we go, all right. So eventually there's gonna be a ton of information here, so it's gonna make sense to do it like this. But let's open a couple of these back out. So the last thing we need to do, we grouped columns, we have our rows frozen. Last thing I'm gonna do is add some color to this, okay? Because it's much easier to read if it's in color, trust me. So let's open it all back up. I'm going to highlight everything, and I want to add formatting, alternating colors, all right? So this is really cool, so check it out. It just automatically gave me the two different shades all the way down so it's easier to see the rows. Okay, pretty neat. Let's add, let's choose a different color. Let's go with um, that blue right there, I like that. You can even add custom colors here if you want, um, but I think this blue is fine. And there we are. We are all set on our student list. We have built it. So give yourself a little round of applause, a little pat on the back. This is a big deal. This is a first step. And very soon you're gonna see all the really cool things you can do. If this is the first time you've used formulas in a spreadsheet, congratulations. You've started on a new journey toward automation and organization. And celebrate that success, it's fantastic. Next time, we're gonna start learning our first magic trick, and that is how to process health forms and any other important paperwork quickly and easily with the power of spreadsheet magic and the count if formula. So thanks for staying with me to the end today. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell to get notified as soon as the next video drops. And in the meantime, send me some comments. How much of this was new knowledge? How easy was it to create and edit? Are you starting to see the possibilities yet? Share your thoughts with the community down below, and don't forget to visit me at ambanddirector.com, where I've got more technology tips and tricks to help us all become better directors. Until next time, Keep teaching, keep learning, and keep the music going.